why are we here? Um, there's a really famous phrase by a very cool investor. Um, I don't know if you know him. His name is Ben Horowitz. He has a very cool book called The Hard Thing About the Hard Thing. So if you like entrepreneurship, I really recommend you read it. It's a lot of fun. He has a lot of quotes from hip hop. Um, it's a very fun book. He tells you his experience launching companies. And he has a very famous phrase that's called software is eating the world. He said it in 2010. We're now in 2020. What did he mean? What he meant is that technology companies, as you know, are taking essentially over the world. If you went 20 years back to 2001, from the top companies in the world, right, there was only one that was in the top 10. And that was Microsoft. 2006, same story. 2011, we had Apple in there. Microsoft dropped. 2016, already the five top ones were um, tech companies. Nowadays, eight out of 10 top companies in the world, so the biggest companies in the world are tech companies. Many people think that these companies only hire developers, but the fact is that 43% of the jobs that they hire for are actually non-technical jobs. And within that spectrum, sales jobs, business development jobs, we'll go exactly into what it is that they do, are the ones in most demand. So only these are figures for DAG and their LinkedIn uh, job opportunities has around 16,000 job opportunities open for sales development reps, business development reps, et cetera. And only 4,500 people that qualify for those jobs. And in the future it's projected that there will be up to 9.2 million jobs by 2030 in sales in the whole of Europe, right? So why aren't people applying like crazy to these jobs? Um, there's three different main blockers, right? So there was a very cool study done by a, a psychologist a while ago, and out of 186,000 people, they, they did several tests on them. And what they saw is that 20% of them were actually very well fitted to work in sales. So again, why aren't people working more in sales, right? There's three main blockers that we identified. The first one is sales has a very negative image. Many people think of, you know, pushy salespeople trying to sell people stuff that they don't need. Sales within the tech environment, as we'll see, is absolutely different. You're much closer to a consulting role. The sales cycles are very long. And at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is provide value and solve a problem for your customer. So much closer to a consulting role, much more sophisticated roles than the traditional sales that we have in our heads. The second reason why people don't go into sales careers is there is no clear education path, right? There's no, you cannot go to university and study sales. It seems like people come from all walks of life and do sales. So there's no, even if you wanted to get into sales, there's no clear way of getting into a sales role. And the third one is many people require um, business degree or some kind of degree to get into sales when it's absolutely not necessary. So that's why we were born, right? We believe that sales careers, we know that sales careers offer very fulfilling um, career paths for different reasons. And what we want to do is try to give people access in the less friction way possible to these careers. So essentially what we do is we select people based on skills. There are different skills that we look for. I'll go a little bit deeper into what they are later, but curiosity, coachability, work ethic are things that we screen for to determine if you would be a potential good fit for sales. Once you have been selected, we put you through a six week online bootcamp. Now, it's a little bit different to all the other education or programs that you have done, right? In, in this program, you do real world sales. So you actually sell real products for a real company. Sometimes they're products from high risk Academy. Sometimes they're an external um, companies, tech companies that we partner with and you sell their products just to make sure that the moment that you join a company, you already have some experience under your belt. You work with industry experts, um, industry coaches that have over five years experience is our prerequisite to be able to be a coach within high res Academy and you work with them hand in hand in very small squads. So there are squads of three to five people. You work with them for the whole duration of the bootcamp and you work online and at your own pace. All you have to do is meet on Mondays. You have a squad meeting on Fridays. You have another squad meeting with your coach. And then during the week, you work through the curriculum, you do the assignments, you do the real world practice. Now by the end, and once you graduate, what we do is we connect you with tech companies. We have a wide network of hiring partners. We're over 30 hiring partners right now. Most of them right now are in Germany and we connect you based on affinity, right? So our, our hiring partners have access to all the profiles um, and depending on whether there's a match, 
you interview with those profiles and we offer job support additional to that. So resume reviews, how to craft your LinkedIn, how to do an interview, how to close a deal, how to negotiate a salary. So we provide job support in, in many other capacities too. This is more or less an overview of the program, just so you know more or less what we teach. I'll go a little bit deeper into what a sales process is, but essentially our program is built along the sales process and you go through each step in the sales cycle, practicing real world sales at every stage. So there is an initial stage where we cover the foundations for people that have absolutely no experience or no idea of sales or the tech world. We get you up to scratch you know, on what it is, what a startup is, what it is to work in the tech industry, what sales is. And then stage two and stage three are going deep into as if you were doing the real job, the real deal for around four weeks of training. And then at the end, you have the job hunting module where, like I said, we prepare you, you know, the whole job search cycle. It's almost a skill in itself, finding a job. So we help you source good companies, apply to good companies, pimp your CV, your LinkedIn. Um, we do mock interviews with you and prepare you essentially to try to get a job in the shortest time possible, which is our number one goal. And right? so compared to a different university, we're not focused on academia. We're not focused on... Uh, theory, what we're focused on is getting you from zero to job ready and into a job in the shortest time possible. And we have one promise, which is courses are risk free. That means if you don't land a job within six months of graduating, you pay nothing. The course is absolutely free. Any questions before we get a little bit more into what is tech sales, right? Because I'm telling you all these uh, ways to enter a career path, but maybe you're thinking, I don't even know if it's the career path for me. So I'll explain to you a little bit what happens in the day-to-day -day of a tech sales and how a career can look like. But I don't know if you have any questions on high rights so far. Alessandro, thanks for joining. I'm gonna give you a loud to speak. Um, pleasure to have you here. So anytime that you wanna chime in and ask a question, you can unmute yourself. Cool. Yeah, good, good afternoon, Alvaro. Good afternoon. Uh, nice to meet you. Phil. Nice to meet you too. Finally, I've been. Finally, yeah, we had a long time to, to get meeting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I went to, uh, to, to a couple of seminars uh, with your colleagues. Oh, what there was interesting about the STR uh, presentation and the, the function of the position. Ah, uh, great. We'll cover it now too. So I'm sure it will be interesting. Christoph, did you have a question? Oh, I'm okay, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Cool, so let's get right into it. Again, stop me whenever you want. I'm gonna do a brief introduction to tech sales and what it is you would be getting yourself into, okay? Let's mute, all right, so let's go for it. What is tech sales? Um, I think it was Chloe, I'm not sure it was Chloe or Chantel, but one of you replied correctly. Tech sales is a very generic term. Uh, essentially, it's selling products, platforms, and services that are associated with technology. But when we talk about tech sales, usually we're referring specifically to selling software solutions, more specifically SaaS solutions. So software as a service, so for example, subscriptions, Netflix would be a software as a service, but we focus on selling software solutions in a B2B environment. So essentially business to business, which means companies that sell to other companies. That can be any kind of software. It can be CRMs like Salesforce, like HubSpot. It can be um, accounting software. It can be any software that you use within a company to make your life easier. HR software is another very good one. Personio, things like that, right? So here's what people think um, sales is, right? The old notion of sales is, hey, you need a rock star, you know, with the, very charismatic and they just go and they they sell and they trick people into buying stuff this is absolutely not like not like that so what does a tech sales professional actually do within the context of selling software solutions to other companies right from a company essentially we have a concept and i won't go too deep into it but i recommend you read a little bit about it because it's very interesting called the buyer's journey and that means any person that is going through a purchase or deciding to do a purchase, they go through very distinct stages. At the beginning, they realize they have a problem, then they probably benchmark different solutions. And then at some point they start to decide within those solutions and then they purchase. 
we even do this individually, right? Imagine you're looking for a phone, you will likely go online, you will search for different phones, then you will decide that you want Apple or you want Huawei or you want some other one. You will look at different vendors, you will look some more online and then you will get the deal you want. Same happens within B2B. And there is a series of activities that sales teams do to nurture leads from the moment that they realize they have a problem all the way down to converting them into a customer. So it's a very mapped out specific process. Now, what are those activities that sales teams do? At the, what we call the top of the funnel. So at the beginning, what sales is very much concerned with is generating leads. So trying to find people that are suitable to sell the product to, right? Identifying who those people are and then reaching out to them directly. This is what we call outbound sales. And this is the more traditional sales at the beginning. You're usually in that role for six months, something like that. And there's a lot of cold calling. So calling on the phone and trying to chat to people. There is a lot of emails, cold emails, and they're recently has a lot more weight. There is a lot of social selling. So going on LinkedIn, creating a presence online, chatting to people, interacting with them, sharing content so that you can get to have a conversation with them. Now, once you have the contact of somebody, the idea is that you need to qualify them. Are they somebody that is suitable to buy my product or not? In other words, do they have the budget to buy it? Am I really solving a need for them or not? Because otherwise we don't want to waste them time, right? Are they the, what we call the ideal target persona? And we do that through something that we call discovery calls. Those discovery calls are typical 30 minute calls where you chat to the person and you ask a lot of questions, right? To understand their worldview. What are your problems? What are your goals? Um, you don't even go into selling a solution at this stage. You just want to qualify and answer the question, are they the right customer for me or not? Next step would be demo meetings, right? Once you have established, hey, they have the budget. I think I can really provide value to them. It's a good time for them. Okay, let's actually showcase the product to them. And that's what we call a sales demo or a product demo. And those are calls where you actually jump. Usually they're done digitally now and you showcase your software and what they can do specifically for your business. None of those boring demo calls where the salesperson just talks through the whole presentation. It's more geared towards what can my product do specifically for you? And then there's the whole process of what we call closing, right? So once they are engaged, it's more about talking about pricing, pricing options, sending the invoice, following up, et cetera. So this would be the big picture of what a sales process looks like. Now, there's different roles that do different things along that sales process. Take this one with a pinch of salt. There might be some companies where you go in and you do the whole sales process. In fact, we have some partners, like for example, Doctolib. The people that go in there, they generate their own leads. They also receive leads from the marketing team and they go all the way to closing. But in a normal SaaS environment, what you do is you usually start with the functions at the top of the funnel. So generating those leads, generating those opportunities, qualifying. And then you transition into a role that is more concerned with closing. Yeah. So I'll go through the three main ones. The first one is SDR or BDR, which is the one you're going to see the most within tech sales. And it's the entry level role for tech sales. SDR means sales development representative. BDR means business development representative. They do essentially the same things. Um, some of them do more outbound, some more cold callings. And all the ones, so BDRs are usually receive the leads and are more concerned with qualifying those leads. So doing the discovery calls and just chatting to people to see if they would be good customers. Once a lead is qualified, they are passed over into an account executive. So we have SDRs, we have account executives. Account executive is concerned with closing. They're usually the ones that do the demos. They're usually the ones that, you know, call to them, chat to them, and try to close the sale at the end of the day. And then all the way at the end, um, we have customer service or cu sorry, customer success, not customer service. We consider customer success a sales role because even though they work with already existing clients, they are concerned with upselling. So they're trying to sell more products from the company or at the end of the day, getting them to spend more money or derive more value. So there are, those are the three main roles. Usually, depending on the country, it varies, but usually you're in an SDR, BDR role, learning the craft for at least anything between six months to a year, year and a half, mostly two years. 
And then you usually transition into an account executive role where you're not doing so much calling anymore. You're not doing, a, you're more concerned with closing. But again, this varies from company to company. Um, and then from there you can go, you can become an account executive for larger accounts. You can become a team lead. You can become, there's many, many different things. We actually have a blog post. I'll share it after um, the webinar with all of you where we have all the different career paths. It's also on our Instagram, if you want to see it. Any questions on the roles? Because this is usually the, the part where people are most interested. And we can leave them till the end. All right, so you might be thinking, that's great. Am I a good fit for these roles or not? There are no specific skills that are universal to every salesperson. Right. So depending on the company, you will need more of some skills or more on the other, depending on the product they sell, the industry they work for and the exact nature of the job. But there are some skills that we have found that usually make a salesperson more successful. The first one is curiosity. So if you are somebody that is naturally drawn to learn, that is, you know, curious and reads about different things and just naturally inclined to learn new things, that is one of the most valuable resources that you can have as a salesperson because it's a continuously growing field and you continuously need to be learning and growing and trying new things. It's a very dynamic job. The second one is coachability. Um, coachability means the ability of giving feedback, receiving feedback and acting upon that feedback. So if you have issues with you know, somebody telling you feedback, obviously in a constructive way, then probably sales is not for you. You're going to receive a lot of feedback you're going to learn a lot and evolve a lot. So you need to be able to receive feedback, not in a personal way, take your ego out of it, act upon it to continue improving and getting better and better. The third one is empathy. Um, that one's probably most important because of the nature of the job. What you do is put yourself in the shoes of the other person and try to understand what their problem is, what they're feeling and how you can help. So if you're a naturally empathetic person, although all these are things that you can learn, if you're naturally empathetic, it, sales will come more naturally to you. And the fourth and fifth one, we can put them almost together is drive and work ethic, right? Are you that person that's going to hustle? Are you that person that's hungry? Are you that person that is ambitious? If you want a nine to five job where you drop your pen at the end of the day and want to leave, then sales is probably not the thing for you. This is a job that is very dynamic, a lot of fun, and where you get what you put in. Right? So you get out what you put in. If you put in a lot, you will get out a lot, make a lot of money. You can have a lot of fun. You can evolve a lot. You can have a lot of growth opportunities. In there. So to wrap up, and I'll shut up now and let you ask some, some questions. Um, it's very fulfilling work. Don't think that you're selling door to door. What you're trying to do at the core of it, at the heart of it, is help people solve their problems, getting into their shoes, understanding what their issues is and how you can help. The pay is great, which obviously is an important factor. So these numbers that you see here are taken from LinkedIn salaries and they are for Germany exclusively, right? So within different countries, there will be different average salaries. Ping me if you want to know them. I also recommend you go to LinkedIn salaries and you do the search yourself. So it doesn't come from me, but you know the source from exactly where it comes from. So an SDR in Germany in the first year and our students, more or less, that's the average. They make 40,000 base. And then the variable salary can vary anything from 10,000 euros to 15,000 euros. So if you're on target with the earnings, if you fulfill your quota, you can make 50, 55K uh, on the first year that you start in sales. And then it grows. It really depends on how you perform, right? But it is something that within two years, three years, five years, you can be making 60, 80, 100K. There's huge demand. There's one we can vouch for. We have more than 25, 30 hiring partners and they're constantly looking for talent. So it's a field that is in demand that we believe will never stop being in demand because it's not something that is automatable, right? It's a very creative job that we haven't been able to do with machines. We hopefully and likely will always need humans to interact with other humans. And most importantly, it's open for everybody, right? So there's no exclusion criteria um, if you pass our selection process, which is relatively straightforward, we will tell you, hey, we think you have um, a good potential for sales or not. And if that is the case, 
it's open for everybody. There's no formal criteria needed and all you need to learn is the right mindset. And that's it. Hope that was insightful. Um, 